Hi everybody, this is Bick Benedict. This is Ninja Gaiden Black. This is Chapter 15, The Core. We're playing on Master Ninja difficulty. So after you clear Chapter 14, um, they at least start you with an info, so if you want to just get out of the the, uh, the sea of fish in there, just activate, activate the fire wheels. Here is a Life of the Gods. We're going to be needing, I believe, let's see, one, two, three more of those. So here, ironically, is the map of the labyrinth that we just went through. So I'm going to equip my um, plasma cutter and deal with the enemies out here. It's just a one-time deal with these enemies. It's it's the normal uh, lesser crabs. Uh, that right there, that move that I did, it's a level 4 move. And what you do is um, you move directionally with the left analog stick. And at the same time you're doing that, hold the Y button down. That move right there, see that? And then you press um, Y again twice. It's a really interesting move. I would really recommend that you guys, you know, look through your moves list because you'll find you will find something that you haven't seen before, unless you're, you know, you've played this game so much that nothing's new to you. Um, so yeah, when I said it's, it's a one-time battle, it's just these guys. There's the move again. That's a cool move, I thought. Uh, but my favorite, I think, is the XX Triple Y move. Uh, but they're all good moves. The Zinner Drop is a good move, or throw, I should say. Uh, so once you kill all these guys, because we're going to be running back and forth, getting money, um, you know, doing several of the floors, coming back, unless you want to do all the floors at once, but it's awfully hard, trust me. Um, so it's nice to just clean up all these enemies, so every time we run back over into this area, we can just run to the save point, or run to the palace, and not have to get interrupted. The only thing that is going to stand in your way if you're going over to where the key is to the palace, you'll have to go through the fish every single time, but um, I, if you watched my previous video, I, I instructed you quite um, thoroughly on how to deal with those guys, so they're not even an issue. So I'm just getting ganged up here, ganged up on pretty well. Um, so my advice on the core is that um, there's four levels of the core. The first, the first one, none of them are really fun except the first one's decent. Um, we have these enemies. It's the same enemies here that we're fighting in the core, and the camera direction is pretty poor. I mean, the, the it's it's all fixed camera. You can't move the camera, um, the right analog stick. And my recommendation for that is um, just if you're gonna um, save it anywhere, save it before the third floor, and then save it after the third floor, and then come back and then do the fourth floor, and then um, from there you can go up to the very top and save your progress. Uh, because what happens is you'll go to there's four there's four levels like I mentioned a few seconds ago. There's four levels. You have to clear each of the four levels. And every time you um, go back down the palace or up the palace, depending on you know if you're coming or going, um, all the enemies are going to spawn again in every single room. But as long as you've cleared the enemies, you don't have to fight the enemies. So you just have to go to the door, which can be a hassle sometimes. So drop smoke bombs if necessary. There we go. I was just showing you how many Life of the Gods I have. I have six, so there's three more. And I know exactly where there are. There's, there's two of them on the staircase, and then there's one at the very, very top. So here I, I jumped into the battle, pressed uh, XXX, jump, X in the air, and then continue with uh, the X button pressers. Um, in Sigma, there's a really cool interaction with a fallen, um, almost dead ninja who hands you the... The, the decayed key and, and perishes and I thought that was a really cool scene but it's not in here it's just in a treasure box um so as, as for the floors um, and when I said the, the none of them are fun I mean it they're, they're not fun the environments aren't fun uh, the enemy combinations are um, I wanted to say the word whack but that would make me sound like an idiot but um, I guess I just said it so Anyway, so now the fish have respawned. 
I got bit. Thought I was gonna die there. Also, if you're, uh, if you have, if you have the armlet of fortune equipped, what that does, I, I did a little bit of research and testing. Uh, the ar it, it says, quote, it increases the key buildup, so it gives you, if you have one flame, if, if one of these enemies get, uh, is giving out a, a, a key drop, and it's one, if you have two slots in your key gauge, you know, two open slots, it'll give you two. It's really cool, I never knew about it. Um, so you, you have to have at least two slots in there, so you get two for the price of one, it's really great. So now we're going to go over here, and uh, normally this is a loading part right here on Sigma, but you know, this is a great optimized game, and we don't have to worry about loading too much. So, it looks formidable. It, it really does. See, there's one box, and then uh, also the 50th Golden Scarab is up here too, and you can get the Dark Dragon Blade, which I would recommend you get, and just in case you'll, you may need it. Uh, if I want to incorporate it. So every time you go into a new room, it's going to stop you before you can put the deity statue in the receptacle. And you can't just go to the receptacle and place it in there. It won't have the interact option. So, but, I mean, just take a room like this. This is a decent room, but if it had, like, you know, if it didn't have, like, these huge ogres and nightmares and these laser crabs... I think it would be a little bit better myself. Um, when you're playing the Eternal Legend, I've never played the one on in this game, but I have com played and completed the one on Sigma, and you do face like traditional ninjas in here, and it's it's a lot more fun um, because it, there's there's a lot of dead angles you run into, and these guys are shooting their laser beams through um, through you know the structures in the room. And it just gets really old really fast. Uh, so what I do is, for instance, if you want to just clear this room and then go back to the save point, go for it. That's your own prerogative. Um, it's a smart thing to do, actually. But what I like to do is do the first two rooms, go back down and save it. Um, and then after that, I'll probably need some items, so I'll go buy items or not. It just depends on how it goes. And then I'll go to the third room say uh, complete that room and then definitely come back and save it because the third and fourth room has nightmares or berserkers Vigorian berserkers they go by several names so now the door opens and obviously you want to equip your flails I did a little editing for us you need it's the same deal just jump or just walk up to them and engage them um, even though this you can't really see here but it's an angle that you know we can't see up the up the full staircase do, just do the same methods that's a that's a testament of a true of a great game um, you know even though you're in a different visual uh, you have a have a little bit of a visual handicap in some of these areas but as long as you're following the protocol it works excellent and that just shows how great this game works and uh, here's the life of the gods we need two more of those so go head on in here and Pretty much from here on out, uh, uh, floor two through four, I'm just going to use magic quite a lot because, I mean, look at this situation here. We have a couple of dinosaurs, and we've got these these crabs. I mean, how are you supposed to do this? You know, I mean, I'm showing you ways to do it here, but it's just like, how are you supposed to do this and have fun? That's the main issue with me. I, I just... There's just not enough room to work with here. You know, these guys have so much range with their weapons. They're so... They're so deadly. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm doing... Fa I'm trying to do forward power techniques with the forward Y attack, but I'm getting interrupted, so I'm just having to drop magic. Um, see, forward Y. He broke my guard. Forward Y. Um, got a UT on this guy. Blocked forward Y. It's just forward Y all the way. And he's gone, and that's the end. And I would, I would definitely go back and save it, you guys, because those berserkers, they're out of control. So once again, equip your flails. And uh, normally, I don't like to use magic so much, especially you'll. I mean, you'll see me. It's just that 
we can't counterattack the those creatures, so you really have to strong arm your way through these last two floors. And it it makes the person look less skillful, I mean if he's just dropping magic so much. Um, Anyway, I think I cut out the session where I, I got two key gate, two flames and just from one drop, having the armlet of fortune equipped. So, I went into this room knowing there's nightmares, and having this weapon on, it probably wasn't the best thing to, to have. Um, do bear in mind, though, that, you know, as long as you're not looking at the other guy, and he's, off, he's out of the camera viewing range, he's most likely not going to attack you. But since these rooms are so cramped, I mean, they, they couldn't have made these rooms any any more claustrophobic here. Um, so I pretty much was going to give up on this strategy, and I did, in fact. And then I equipped the Lunar, because it's a, I think it's a better weapon to deal with these guys. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you use on these guys in Sigma, because you would just parry their attacks. And... It would be actually be ideal if you were p trying to do a lot of parries with low health and using the UF, but we can't parry these guys, so we just have to use different techniques. And um, so pretty much, whenever I'm getting boxed into a, into a corner or I'm getting overwhelmed with these guys here, fortunately it's just two at a time. But you know, even one at a time would one at a time would be a little bit better here, I feel. Um, so I'm just dropping Nimpo you know, very, very liberally, because I know I can just go back and buy more. Now I'm going to equip the Lunar and just do uh, very, uh, very heavy attacks with the XXY move, XC, XXY. XXY there, they always drop uh, health drops, so either use that if you're low on health or do what I did, do a charge right there. I don't like the way they move away from that charge. That's a little bit too intelligent for my <laughs> liking right there. I like my enemies dumb. But uh, it does show a bit of intuitiveness on the, a the, on the AI's part. So I don't know how many there are here. To tell you the truth, I probably should have put the kill counter up. But there, there probably is six. So, you know, um, it's nice that you can do the wind path off their heads. Um, right when they go into berserk mode, see that? It, it's just, don't get around them. Right when they transform and go and they, and they start raging, that's when the, they're most aggressive, and that's when you can block the least, and that seems to be when you get damaged the most. So, I'm just, you know, using this magic the most. I'm just getting full use of this. Um, at least you can go back down. You know, I mean, you can come and go. It is annoying that um, you get interrupted. I mean, I mean, all these rooms repopulate. That is. So, I don't think I have the. I think I have the armlet of the moon equipped. So this might have went a little bit faster if I had the armlet of the sun equipped. Um, but then again, you know, I might have taken more damage. And it might have been even a longer session of me going into the menu more times to, to, to get heal, to get healed. So, uh, this might be the last guy. See how they just love to block and... Uh, man, I hate that one. I hate that attack that pushes you over like that. So, I'm going to use some more Nimpo here. It takes a lot of Nimpo to take these guys down. So, I'm, I'm just coupling... My attacks with the lunar with the with the magic, and uh, we just have one more room after this. I've never enjoyed this. I, I really haven't. Um, it, it's the environment in one part, and then it's just the assortment of enemies. I don't, you know, these enemies don't really care for these guys too much. I didn't mind them as much in Sigma because you could parry their attacks, but you know, you take that away, and then it's just an enemy that's. Just too overwhelming, too fast, overpowered. And at the end of the day, not fun to fight. And that's a shame. So, there's the cutscene, the door unlocks. Now we're going to place this next deity statue in the receptacle. And now I'm going to also equip my Vigorian flails.
and the next Life of the Gods is coming up too. So, and then also the fiftieth Golden Scarab. So what I would do, what I would, if I were you, what I would do, um, because the the dark you get for fifty Golden Scarabs, Miramasa is going to give you the Dark Dragon Blade, and uh, I have had success using that against uh, Nietzsche before. So definitely, you might as well. Go back. I mean, as long as you're going back and buying more supplies, just give them the Golden Scarab. So there's number 50, and I can confirm that I did get them all. Okay, we're coming up on the final room. This is the... Uh, see? This is the third floor. We still have to... See how you can just go through the room right there? You don't have to do the battle. Going to slay these ghost fish, and then, we're gonna, then we are going to be coming up on the fourth room. Um, and then we have a very tough gauntlet ahead of us. It always takes me a long time to complete it. I think it took me about four tries, and then I beat it on my fifth try. I was just experimenting with weapons and such like that. So here is the second to last life of the gods right here. Oh no, we already got that, my bad. Um, okay, so here's... I don't like the environment to this room here. It's... A little easier, but I don't know. It, it's just the enemy assortment's really weird here. I mean, look what we have. We have an ogre, we have a nightmare, and we have that little crab fiend there. And I think there's there's even more of these guys after you kill them. So I went in here with the unlabored flawlessness, thinking I would do power techniques. Um, you know, because normally I use the UF or the Dabalacro on the ogres, and I use the lunar on the berserker, and then I would use the... Uh, you know the dragon sword on the little crab so you know it's just a weird weird situation it's a bad room just drop nimpo that's all i can say just keep dropping nimpo it's seems like a cop out but it's really not i mean this environment it doesn't cater to the gameplay that we've been accustomed to in a lot of respects of this game so that's the only reason i really came in here with the unlabored flaws since equipped i would have just used the the lunar but the Lunar is not going to really do anything to the Ogre, so... Um, here I'm going to switch to the Lunar and start doing um, XXY attacks on this guy. And when things get crazy, just, just drop Nimpo. Um, so then once we get out of this room, there's one more wave of fish to contend with. And then we'll be accessing the save point. And then there's two boxes up um, in the gates of hell up above, ironically. So, I don't think there's too many of these guys here, honestly. When I first came on, when I, when I was first playing this on normal, I was trying to parry, the, if, if they're even in normal, I'm not sure. They might not be. But I was trying to parry their attacks. Just, um, I also, someone else pointed out uh, this morning, I was looking at my comments for the Labyrinth level, and I forgot to do the, there's a mirror puzzle in the, the temple before the Labyrinth, and it gives you a Jewel of the Demon Seal. Um, so I won't spoil how to do it, uh, but it does give you that final Jewel of the Demon Seal, which I, I regret, but I, you know, it, it takes a long time to upload these files, and I... I can't just insert footage because I don't have the uh, I don't have the Sony Vegas file anymore. I only have the I mean I could do it, but it's just not worth it. I'm sorry about that. The guide is a little bit more incomplete for it. Uh, that was a cool move right there. Well, it's a little bit more incomplete, but it's you know I did I did not do one of the fiend challenges too, so this is not a hundred hundred percent completion guide, but it's a very thorough guide, and I, you know, I would, I would kind of dare you to find a, another guide that's more thorough than mine is. I mean, look at the description for all these videos. I take my time to write down where every little detail is via a time code. So you would really be hard pressed to find another guide as complete as this one. So at least there's only one of these guys at a time here, and this guy this guy might be the final guy you have to defeat. Um, so recommendations for the for the Marvis Gauntlet, it's really hard. I mean, it's very, very difficult. You do have lackeys during the fight on the on Ishtaros and Nikkei, you have lackeys. They're the same lackeys. I, I believe they're, they're the same, little crab fiends. 
and you would think that they would help you out, you know, you absorb their essence to do charges, but the way I deal with those two bosses, lackeys don't really help me out. They don't make the fight harder by any means, because I'm dropping Nympos so much that they just die quickly anyway. The only thing they're, they're really good for is health drops, so that's actually nice. But this gauntlet is, aside from the damage you receive, it's easier than the very hard gauntlet of Marbus. It's the same gauntlet. You, you know, obviously, we're, we're, we're dealing a little bit more, I mean, we're getting hit more on Master Ninja. You know, but with lackeys, a lot of the damage you take, you can just, you know, get get it back from health drops. So it's really nice. So I would I would venture to say that it's easier. Well, this gauntlet's easier. So, gonna place the deity statue in this receptacle here, and that's the final one. We will need to get one more up after the Marvus Gauntlet. It's the Devil Deity. So I'm gonna equip my flail and head on out here. You will have to backtrack a couple times. I mean, probably when you get up here all the way, you'll save your data. This is what I did. I saved my data. I went all the way back, got all my money, got all my items, ran all the way back up to the did the Marvus Gauntlet. Then when I was done with that, I was out of items completely, so I had to go back and do it all over again. Um, save your data here first, and then save your data and get and get the one. These are random, so get the life of the gods, and then don't get the other chest which has the fish until after the the Marvis gauntlet, so you can get some you know health and magic back after the fight. Okay, here's the first wave of the Marvis gauntlet. We have uh, twelve pincer fiends three at a time, so we'll have four waves of these three enemies. I'm equipping the Unlabored Flawlessness because I can do the Azuna drop with it, and I can also uh, charge off uh, charge off attacks off of dropped essence from the environment. So, uh, this is unfixed camera, um, because you can move the right analog stick all around. The, the battles with Mar the, ba the battles with the bosses that's unfixed camera. You can't move the camera around anywhere. And uh, it's kind of... You get used to being able to move the camera around, then you go to a boss, and then you can't move the camera around. So, the real problem in here is, for me, it's not really Marbus. He's pretty easy. Um, it's just Nikkei and his tar -offs are very, very difficult bosses. So what I like to do is just equip the Dark Dragon Blade. If you've been following my guide, you've found all 50 Golden Scarabs. So what I like to do here is immediately, she likes to do her kick, um, that, that's a throw, to grab. So either evade very quickly or drop Nympho right away. And see, she has lackeys. So if you want to deal with her in the same way you dealt with um, Alma, you know, Fly Swallows, Azuna Drops, things like that, you can. But this arena is so it's so small and, and unserviceable for me. I can't I hate this environment because you see how when you run up against the wall it has that little ripple effect so it it makes you it's on it's done intentionally and it's it looks nice aesthetically but it, it doesn't help the battle any. So what I do is just jump off the wall, do the Y attack when I'm coming down off a jump, and then every time I come down, even if I hit or miss, regardless, I drop Nympho. I didn't do it right there because sometimes I do like to conserve it. Um, see, that's the price you pay. And she deals out so much damage. She deals out... See that damage right there? It's incredible. It doesn't make any sense why she deals so much damage. And I have the armlet of the moon equipped too. Um, so, item distribution and conservation is very important here. I'm using Ione's rations. See, I'm using all these nice little items that we got from trading in the scarabs. Uh, the, the the high potion actually gives you only um, the fragrance of hydrangea and only gives you three key uh, key refills. Uh, the other one gives you one. So if you thought I was wasting it there, I wasn't. So I'm just gonna keep jumping off the wall, coming down with the dark dragon blade. I've tested coming down uh, or using the dabalacro and the unlabored flawlessness and that doesn't seem to work very well. This is the only thing that, that works when you're doing wall jumps and coming and coming down on her with a, with a Y attack. So it deals pretty good damage. If you want to have the armlet of the sun equipped you can go for it but remember you'll receive more damage. It's just that she's throwing her projectiles around. It's so hard to move in this environment. We can't move the camera. 
you've got to run it in a diagonal, and the wall's always getting in your way. So see how we have lackeys here? These guys are not here, in, not here on very hard mode. So they, at least you get some item drops. That guy seemed seem to have been playing dead right there. So I'm gonna use my three items here. I mean, normally I would probably say to, you know, do fly, because it, it works really well. Sometimes the flying swallows, they connect a lot, but sometimes they just don't connect, so I like doing this technique because at least I know that my hits are going to connect more often than my fly swallow does on average. So, getting really damaged severely here, so I'm going to have to use a lot of healing items. And it's the same kind of arena for H. Taros too. I I think these are the worst arenas to ever fight a battle in, especially these uh, these bosses here. So this is uh, almost finishing up. It's just it's just one of those fights where I always have to waste a lot of items, and it's regrettable too, because when I'm on Marbus, you know, almost going to defeat him, I have hardly any items left. So really have to distribute your items well. Come here with everything, everything maxed out. All of Ayane's um, little rewards too, those will very much help you. They're not the best, but at least it's something. I mean, at least it'll, it'll fill you up a little bit, give you some magic. And that could be the difference between winning and losing. So, one more hit. She just needs one more hit to go down. There we go. Bitch went down. Hate, I hate that enemy so much. Uh, this next wave, we're going to have uh, more of the pincer fiends, um, but Marbus from his throne is going to be throwing projectiles at us while we're fighting. So whenever you hear him chuckle, that means that he's going to throw a projectile, so you just need to move away. Move out of the way. There's iframes from this, from the uh, the body slam of the Izuna drop I was doing right there. So at this point of the battle, just listen. And uh, this, this, see, sometimes I just get trashed here. So I'm going to drop some magic. See if anyone's giving me health drops. If not, um, I'm gonna charge attacks. And I think there's fewer pincer fiends than there was in the first wave. But you know, once this wave's dead, prepare for another very tough fight with this Taros. And I just equip the. Um, you can equ I, I equip the plasma saber, but you can equip the dragon sword if you want to. The true dragon sword. They both have the same strength and the same move set. It's just uh, it's just for aesthetics. Anyway, um, equip the armlet of celerity. That's the best tool to have for her. We have this horrible arena once again, and she does a really uh, hard to dodge move where she does this laser beam attack across the screen, and it, it deals you tremendous damage. Um, so when, when she does that, I like to drop Nimpo. Um, some of the edits that I do for these fights, it's just because I'm looking at my menu too long and it's um, you know taking too long and the fight's dragging on and it's no fun to, to watch me survey the menu. So here, do the Gleaming Blade attack, and then right as you anticipate her to jump on you, release. And it's really nice to have the Armlet of Celerity here. Um, she can hit you if you're like in the middle of the screen when she's uh, swinging around the environment. She can hit you, so fortunately she didn't hit me. Um, even though, like, if you rewind that, she, was, she made direct contact with me. So it's just one of those things where you want to stay to the right side of the screen. Uh, but sometimes you land in the middle and you're just trying to desperately build up that charge because a UT with this weapon is very nice to get. See, that was an ET, but it still dealt good damage. But a UT will, will just tear her up so bad. So you really need to have the armlet of celerity equipped to, to at least, you know, if you're barely getting a charge, at least get your ET. And if she's doing a lot of swinging around, you could do a UT, and it'll deal her massive damage. You don't want her to jump and fall on you, um, because then you're really screwed. So basically, I just... Uh, I don't even... Some people like to do XXY attacks. See that? It just takes away way too much damage, so... I'm just running around the environment, waiting for her to do a rope swing. It's pretty much... That's the move that's going to save you. So... There we did. Got tremendous damage right there. Um... You kind of have to feel like when she's coming. You have to know it instinctively when she's going to drop on you. See? You just kind of have to go with your gut and release it. You don't want to release it too soon. 
because if you release it too soon, um, you'll you'll do the animation of the gleaming blade, and then she'll you'll have a lot of recovery um, frames to deal with, and then she'll really eat you up. It's very bad. Um, but that move right there, I, I just hate it so much. I hate this arena. It's a tough fight. Uh, maybe there, th maybe there are no lackeys for this fight. I thought there were. Anyway, I'm just using magic and then just praying that I'm not going to get hit while she's swinging around. See if we can get some nice charges going and just dropping a lot of nimpo so I could, you know, stay free of her strong attacks. Use another item over here. Didn't want to use it, but you know, sometimes you just have to. I think I have one talisman of rebirth left too for Marbus. It's just there's a lot building up to the Marvis fight. Once you get there, everything's on the table. I mean everything. Um, so the Marvis fight, I would recommend probably have your armlet of the moon equipped. Because um, we have lackeys. He always has lackeys. So he's going to have lackeys, but they're actually beneficial to this fight. So she's down. Marvis is the next foe we're going to fight. So you have time here to get your bearings straight. I'm just going to go into the fight. I used uh, some Nimpo. Now I have Nimpo. Now see, he summons lackeys, and this is unfixed camera. No, no, this is fixed. It's, it's, it's fixed camera. Center the camera, and then dodge at the last second. You see right there? I got hit because I was getting overwhelmed, and I was too worried. Um, and I didn't adjust the camera in time, and I was... That was the only time I made that mistake. Fortunately, we got him there. Uh, but since this is unfixed camera, um, whenever he's going to do his whirlwind twirl down at you, that's the best opportunity to center the camera and then evade at the last second. Um, going to evade in a diagonal, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Um, see, we had iframes during that body slam right there. He's going to do that pounce. I don't really mess with him too much when he's when he does that attack. Summoning lackeys, I'm going to dispense with them with the, the magic or do a quick Azuna drop. And just wait for him to do the whirlwind tw twirl. That's the only move I, I wait for him to do. And then see, I'm going to center the camera. He's going to charge, evade, and I, then I do XXYYYY. Or excuse me, XXYYY. It's that X, X triple Y combo that I always mention. It's my favorite move. It's just a very quick move. It does a lot of damage. You could also do the gleaming blade attack if you want to. Plus, if there's essence on in the vicinity from a, from a lackey, uh, you could deal some really good damage to him. So I just always keep the camera centered, I evade, um, wait for the lackeys to come, Azuna drop the lackeys, just get them out of the way. Sometimes the splash damage will hit Marvis and it's really nice. Um, here I'm going to, unfortunately I missed that charge right there because the guy was going crazy. Got a little splash damage, see that splash damage on Marvis? At least that was some damage. Free damage. Even, the, even that uh, in Azuma hit right there, so evade when he goes across the screen, it flies at you. This attack, he always does a whirlwind a twirl after that, so guard, evade, go in, XX, Y, 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 and then evade. Don't get greedy, do not don't do not linger next to him where he'll grab you and thrash you and, and, and deal tremendous damage to you. There he goes, I got hit by one, he's going to do his whirlwind twirl. See, he was off screen and I had to, I had to know as a player, I, right there, I had to know the timing and you have to you have to practice and know this guy and it's hard to if you've never fought him before and you're just getting here um, you can fight you can fight him excuse me in the challenges and practice him so just always keep that camera centered behind you especially because you want him when he's doing his whirlwind twirl you want to be at the six o'clock position when he's at the twelve o'clock position you can guarantee that you can be in those two positions or rather that you both can be there by centering the camera, see? Um, what I don't like to have happen is he's, he's, when he does the twir whirlwind twirl and I have any lackeys around. That means um, I can't focus enough and or get those hits. So I'm gonna pick up this Nimpo right there. Remember if you want increased Nimpo drops, equip the Armlet of Fortune. Um, but I'm just trying to preserve my health so that's why I have the Armlet of the Moon equipped. He's gonna do the twirl, center the camera, I have to know the timing right there. I had to know it once again. See, he was off screen. This arena is not very serviceable either. So, when he dashes at you, evade. 
and pretty much that's all I do. I don't mess around with him at any other times because I know the times that he's vulnerable to attacks. Always off, of, always off of that after he throws those projectiles. Um, but if you if you kind of play it slowly the way I'm doing it, he, he summons a lot of lackeys. But I did have either a talisman of rebirth or you know I had another spirit elixir in my inventory. I think I've used both talismans of rebirth, but I did have another healing item, so I did have a little leeway as far as that. And I know that I can deal with these lackeys pretty well by doing the Izuna drop, even though they are evasive. Also, when he's going to do the Whirlwind Twirl, try to stay a little far away from him. See, see this? Um, that was an example of what I was talking about before, having a lackey when he's doing his twirl. So, if he hits you, if you don't evade when he's doing his Whirlwind Twirl, you don't get an opportunity to hit him. So your reward for being... Uh, a good evader of that move is he gets you, he gives you free shots like this. See, center the camera, evade, go back, XX, triple Y, or what I did right there, I did some, I dragged some essence over to me and used it for a charge. So, he's almost dead, he's probably going to summon some more lackeys, evade. Yeah, more lackeys, just, uh, I like to Azuna drop them right away, see. Center the camera, evade at the last second. See, got punished for not evading. I guess I made that mistake twice. So he just has a little bit more damage. I have, I, yeah, I have a great spirit elixir, so this battle's pretty much mine, but I still can't afford to be arrogant or think that, you know, nothing can go wrong when it can. And it, it could, you know, it has gone wrong for me many times. Um, so as long as you play skillfully, are patient, and you're methodical about what you're doing, this should be a victory that you can get. E pretty, if not easily, then confidently at least. So XX, Y, 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 this guy's a dead bitch. Now we're going to get our last deity statue, and we'll be going on to the final two bosses, which are very easy, but you will need to go um, completely restock your inventory, so leave the core palace. Okay, it's not over quite yet, though. We have two more bosses. Um, first one being Ultimate Alma, the second one being the Dar Dark Emperor. So you're going to have to go back and re completely re restock your inventory, max out everything, because once you defeat this boss, you'll be going on to the 16th and final chapter, and there's obviously no store. And we're going to need to take out Dark Mirai. So go back to this portal after having grabbed that statue, save your progress, um, get this box of fish to replenish your health. Here, put the demon statue in this receptacle up here, and then we're going to be facing Ultimate Alma. The best thing I could tell you is you need to spam uh, the Art of the Inazuma or the Art of the Inferno. So I like to equip the Armlet of the Sun because I know I, I can deal more damage that way. I could deal the ultimate amount of damage, plus knowing that I'm going to be having iframes for the majority of the battle. I, I, I can just use the Armlet of the Sun without any repercussions of not having the, the Armlet of the Moon equipped. So she has three forms here. All I do is XXX and then um, to avoid these energy beams I just cast Nimpo. Um, she has three parts, her two arms and her the breast portion of her. So XXX, drop Nimpo and repeat ad nauseum. Um, you can move around on this platform, and it looks kind of odd, but you basically just want to move the platform with the left analog stick over to the jeweled areas of her body. Um, because it's extremely hard to dodge the energy beams. Um, so put your armlet of the sun on so you can deal more damage. Use the dragon sword, XXX, or any other combos. I, don't, I just don't like to do XXY because it leaves me a little bit more vulnerable than just pressing the X button three times. Uh, but if you if you can get off a couple X, you know, triple X combos, that's good. But I just have no interest in trying to dodge these uh, projectiles. It's way too laborious, and you need to be too precise for the game's own good. It's really ridiculous. You'll get a cutscene when you've severed, a, severed an appendage, like right there. Um, her energy beams do speed up the, the closer you get to taking her out. So just move the platform toward her, focus on hitting those jewels, 
drop Nympho. And then uh, we're going to be dealing with the Dark Emperor in the next fight. So don't hold back. Use all your Nympho here. Uh, well, not as not all of it, but as much as you need to. I mean, this is the reason why we've been doing all the Fiend challenges, finding all the items, because these bosses are tough. So she should be going down right over here. And then for the next fight, you'll need to equip your Armlet of the Moon to take less damage. It's just a recommendation. You could have what you want, but I would recommend that particular Armlet. And we're going to be doing projectile. We're going to be doing a projectile attacks on the boss. Um, see how he, he doesn't really move at first. Just hit the skulls and hit, just hit his body. We have three. We have three types of arrows here. And when, when once they start glowing, he's going to hurl all his heads at you. And then he's going to try to bite you, grab you. So you need to do uh, the reverse wind. Just dodge to to avoid it, or drop Nimpo and he can't hit you. So I like to st start out with the Strongbow, just fire all my 15. You have to have a... well, you don't have to, you can hit him with normal attacks as I was forced to do at the end of this battle, but like I said before, come here with everything, every item maxed out. I think you can even throw incendiary restrictions at him, but uh, I, just like, I just go through all my Strongbows, go through all my um, explosive arrows, all my core rods, and then when he does this, I just cast Nimpo twice. Watch how the second time I do it, his little his head he goes right through me. Well, I think it was a little bit too late right there, but I avoided it anyway. So mainly you're just focusing on hitting the heads, not like where the his his body is. Um, but with 45 projectiles, you should be able to almost kill this guy, depending on how accurate you are. There will come a time though that you may run out of arrows. If that happens, try to use your incendiary shurikens or. Just keep using Nimpo, because the, the Nimpo will damage him. And uh, don't I wouldn't rush into the lava. The lava will deal you incremental damage. It's not huge damage, but you, you really don't want to go into the lava. I think the game knows that if you're out of arrows, so he'll just kind of come over to you, and that's when you can start hitting him with normal attacks. Uh, see here, I'm just casting Nimpo, um, hitting his legs, and he's almost dead. And that'll be the end of the level. It's a tough level. It was a long and tough level, but we did it. And I hope you did it, too. And I believe I got the Master Ninja rank, which was appropriate for all my efforts. So he's almost dead. I used some more Nimpo right there. Now I'm just going to go over to him, and I think this Nimpo just takes care of him right here. And then in the next chapter, we're going to be dealing with Dark Mirai.